Hello, I'm Terry Malloy, better known as Gavis. I am welcoming you to the Omega Files. Listen very carefully. <laughs> very. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Omega Files. I am your host, Dalek Freedom. Tonight, we're going to discuss an episode that does not involve my species. <gasps> invasion, the Zygon invasion, which to me was weird, since it seemed to be more of an uprising or a revolution than a proper invasion. It does not matter. They are an inferior species. Joining me tonight on the podcast is Kevin. Say your approximation of a hello. Hello. And AJ. Live from down under in the future. Philip. Good evening. William. Hello. Def says hello. Ryan. Hello there. Beef. Tonight I'll be Philip Archer. Texas <laughs> 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 Tim. Hello. Matt. Hello, hello, hello. And Graham. Welcome to the Twilight Zone. I'm second, I'm here. So, a rather interesting episode involving many, many different locations and also. Once again, we have an evil companion running amok. But let's get your opening thoughts on this attempt at, at entertainment. Let's start with Graham. What are your opening thoughts on this little story? Uh, I enjoyed this. Um, I know a lot of people are going to be running into their forums with their flaming fingers of fury and saying, oh my God, the Doctor get just about ample time as much as Kate and Jenna. Um, but at the end of the day, for, for you know, it was the first part, a yeah, two-parter. I can understand if people think it might have been a wee bit slow in the middle, but at the end of the day, it was necessary to tell this story, and it's got me amped and really excited for next week. Let's see what happens. Go Zygons. Yes, it must seem like one of your matches. Ha, 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 ha. Thank you. Next up, Matt Rose. Oh, hello. Very much enjoyed this. Um, it was great. It's a great return of the Zygons. I, I, it was a very nice callback to Day of the Doctor at the start. It's very nice um, that they've been finally used properly again. This is like, we want to take over the world. Yes, the standard. Um, I was really upset with the new character, Jack, because I thought um, she was going to be in for the long haul, but oh, just... Just a bit sad by her ending. It's very great story, and people who still think Jenna's not great, I love, I love it. It's just she's playing a doubles. You got two different versions of her character, the Zygon and her, and it was nice seeing Osgood again, and the sister thing's been resolved, which I, I really liked. It's an enjoyable opener. And it is really hyping up for next week. It's really exciting. Peter Harness has really done a great job on this first half. So I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes next week. Next up, Texas Tim. Well, uh, on first watch, I thought it might have been a little bit slow in a couple of places. But um, I never have optimal watching conditions whenever I'm watching it live. And um, plus, I'm at work, so I get interrupted. I missed several key bits. When I watched it around the second time, it made a lot more sense to me. A lot of things did, especially the, the twists at the end and stuff. 
uh, I agree with Graham. It's like a, it's a good first part of a good story. And I, I didn't notice that the doctor wasn't really there that much. I mean, it's, it's, it is what it is. I mean, it's Doctor Who. So, I mean, it's not like he was absent or like it, this wasn't really a Doctor Light episode. But, um, yeah, I think it's the first part of a good story. It's um, it's one you really have to watch back again to, c to catch a few things that you missed. So, I mean, uh, I mean, so far I'm digging it. Next up, Beefhead. Yeah, liking it. If you're going to have something that's going to be an invasion or a takeover, you have to have it on a big scale. So you're going to have your three main principles in different places. So, you know, the, if you're going to have the complaint that it's going to be a bit slow, you have to have that to give it such a big, epic feel to it. It's a nice setup um, that it's you get descending fa dissenting factors in any civilization or any group of people. And, you know, humans end up being sparky lumps of fur and mush on the floor. So there's, the, you know, I like it. It was fun. Yes, benefits definitely from a second watch. Watch and um, yeah, next week I think will be certainly interesting. Good solid start. Next up, Ryan. Uh, yeah, I mean I really um, am digging this episode. I wasn't too thrilled with the Zygons in Day of the Doctor, as a as a lot of people weren't. Um, but to see them come back as a fully fledged force this time around and as proper villains it was really cool to see um that fantastic twist at the end it was just brilliant and um really looking forward to next week next up william like everybody was saying um it was a little like even though the, um it was slow in the middle it was needed since this is part of a two-part story um whether um which um ours good is it it doesn't really matter because we know that this story takes place after the after the um, what happened with Missy and all that last year. Uh, we sort of seen the photos of um Clara with the rocket launcher and all that, so we suspected it that at the end it was gonna be a uh, a Zygon. But but seeing the way that this is a build up to a you can see a battle supposedly. Or does the doctor use that um, uh, germ thing that was de developed to destroy them? We have to <coughs> find out next week. Yes, an interesting conundrum. In my case, it would be easy. Exterminate them. Next up, Philip. You, Philip. The one yeah, who sorry. the voice a week ago. I know, I, I couldn't turn my uh, mute off. Um, I like this. Um, it has a very kind of silly James, James Bond feel to it. Um, um, I like the, like what Ryan said, the, the Zygons were, 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 were put to good use this time around. And um, the story premise is very interesting. Um, I'm looking forward to the resolution as well. I do love the fact that we're seeing a, 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 a dark, naughty uh, Clara, as opposed to the normal... <laughs> Happy go, go lucky, and and as I said to some some guys before, you mean a dog, Claire? That was a freaking Zygon. I know, but you, you know, I mean, you know, I, I like that. They, they made a character, they changed her up to be a bit more uh, rah. Yes, yeah, yeah. So that's cool. Um, yes, there was there wasn't enough Capaldi knocking around the place, but he had his he had his parts in it. He's yeah. in it, but it was a kind of weaker show over him. Um, Nice to see Osgood again, and um, I don't know. I just want to see the doctor's um, question mark on the pants, really. Oh my god, I knew oh you'd go there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, we know, I, I, think we know, I think we know what the question is with regards to Philip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, AJ. Uh, I like this episode. Um, it wasn't too fast or too slow in any part. But for me, I feel it was uh, quite evenly paced. Um, it sort of shows also what's happening in the real world, you know, with mm -hmm. wars and factions and whatnot. So it's sort of a, a science science fiction echo of what's going on in the real world today. And, Good and point. Yeah. So 
it's relevant as far as I'm concerned. And lastly, Kevin, try to keep the f bombs to yourself. Yeah, you should say that, darling Brian. Um, well, where to start? Oh yeah, the um, Zygons. Well, I have never seen uh, the Zygons in old Who. Uh, I've never seen an episode of that, you know, of uh, in in the old Who yet. But uh, in Day of the Doctor, uh, if you see if you compare them to uh, this week's episode, they are far better and evil. They are finally evil, not like you know, like uh, Elizabeth with the horse and all that uh, shizzle. Um, <laughs> let's. Uh, oh yeah, uh, all's good. And about uh, the Osgood box, so we uh, we all thought that, of course, maybe Osgood was dead, but she wasn't dead. It was the uh, Zygon uh, double, Finny. No, as far as we know, we yeah. do not really know. Yeah, right, we don't really know. But <coughs> I'm I'm going maybe. But they said they were both half human, half Zygon. Oh yeah, hybrid. Oh yeah. They, pulled, that, that, they that did worked. anti cat in stereo. Yeah. All right. Well. Uh, are you going to talk over my review, Graham? I'm going to do it with yours. So it's your choice. <laughs> <laughs> Say what? <laughs> my name is Tim. He, he's yeah. the, He's the the gothic one. Uh, yeah. Well, so uh, Clara, that twist. Oh uh, man, I didn't expect that. Uh, when we first saw the pictures of the missile in the trailey, trailer, we were uh, ex expecting she was shooting something else instead of the doctor's freaking airplane. Um, play the, uh, git uh, the guitar again in this episode with Amazing Grace. And uh, Doctor was just funny and uh, the Zygons were scary. Kate... Uh, was uh, just a unit, you know. Uh, it was it was a scary episode, but uh, I have to see uh, next week to uh, give it a grade, or you know. So. Okay. Ugh. All right, let's get rid of that nonsense, shall we? <laughs> yes. Ugh. So, okay, now, all right, let's open up the floor of conversation. Um. Anybody else here notice the reference to Harry Sullivan without actually yeah. mentioning his name? Yeah, yeah, not looking cool. <laughs> not looking cool. Not <laughs> what was it? It was the uh, the, the development of the gas, wasn't it? The gas, yeah. yeah. Like a, navy, a navy man, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, navy well, man. Oh, sorry. The reference. To, did anybody catch the reference to Parliament Funkadelic? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dr. Uh, Funkenstein. Funkenstein, yeah. You know, do you know what? You know what? I did this. You know, you know when we came into the um, Zygon Control Center. Yeah. I, I, miss, I wish they would have put the incidental sound effects from what from what they had in Joe the Zygon. You know, with the weird kind of you know the heartbeat sound and all that from the um, Zygon spaceship. That would be nice. Mm. To I even liked the little was good sort of little fan girly type thing as well with the heart little picture up on the wall and everything like that in a in a yeah, house. Well, I spotted that, yeah. Spotted <clears throat> all the other sort of bits on the wall. I'm sure there's a little yeah. trove of stuff that you'll pick out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What did the what did the box mean though? Not yet. Sure what? yet. Or is that something that's gonna pay off next week? I think Rose. so. It, yeah, it's, so. it's some sort of um do they box destroy everything or destroy every Zygon? Unless that um, chemical weapon is in there. Yeah. But um, my only gripe is unit. What's the point of having a unit? They are so worthless these days. They really are. They can't do their job. No, they, made it, they, they made it clear, though, that the, the, the other Zygon, I mean, the other Osgood, um, whatever she was, got so upset at the death of her other person that she ran off to Truth or Consequences, New Mexico, and just, you know, kind of like left. And I guess nobody at UNIT was able to figure out what, what you know, that this, this kind of thing was happening. <clears throat> so, like, 
like AJ pointed out as well, this is an insurrection of a few uh, of a few Zygons, like a uh, what do you call it, a cult or something. Yeah, yeah, a breakaway. A breakaway. Yeah. yeah. Are you writing? <laughs> okay, Bill. What were your opening thoughts on this one? This episode was brought to you by Jim Beam. Oh, nice. <laughs> Is that it? <laughs> okay, so, yeah, truth or consequences, New Mexico. Talk about, you know, the weirdest place in America to go find out you, know, you have a Zygon invasion. Mm. Okay. Um, also, we had Rebecca uh, Rebecca Front, wasn't it? was in this one as yeah. well, the colonel. Yeah. Yeah, she was nice. as just like a complete warmonger, to be honest with you. Yeah. yeah just, yeah, just <laughs> kill them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, bomb, bomb them. Yeah, get them down, man. You know. Yeah. I, I thought that scene when you just had the mother and all of that stepping outside the church. I just thought that was just like such an intense scene. Yeah, yeah. that was a wimpy scene. The shoulder should have wounded them in the shoulder or the leg like that to see if they transform. Right. No, there. Spoken yeah. like spoken like trimmerine there. Well, no, but I mean. Uh, but, yeah, right. But, <laughs> but the, <laughs> The the point of that scene, you know what I did love? I, I loved I loved the music and the score in that scene as well. Yeah, the, the music running through it, but that was cool. Yeah, like that woman was co continually saying, "Kill it, kill it, kill your freaking it, water." It just, it just shows what the Zygons will do just to kill you. Yeah. Around with your head. Are 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 the Zygons also given positions in high? Are the Zygons given position in high place in high high places as well um, as, as living amongst the humans? I don't know. I mean, you saw the two commanders. It was a bunch of seven-year-old twins. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, AJ. Anyone else notice about the church in uh, Truth and Consequences? It said Alpha and Omega. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. The beginning. Oh no, no! Don't drag that up again. That's a bad. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> To me, uh, no, no, I'm not talking about Omega. I'm just saying Alpha and Omega, like the, the beginning. beginning and the end. <clears throat> That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, floor is wide open. So if anyone wants to throw anything out, go right in. Oh, all right, but then uh, again, um, I think. Well, I guess I thought it was it was odd that um, that Clara was acting pretty much like Clara throughout, even though she'd already been um, replaced yeah. pretty early in, according to the flashback, and. Yeah. I mean, even even being as nerdy as saying that, you know, oh, I memorized the game so I could win it, you know, the, yeah, the trivial pursuit. Yeah. Um, so, I guess I guess they explain that when Osgood says later that no, 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 they take your memories and they can still act like you, even yeah. if they don't have the body. Yeah. Because at, at, at first, I, when I, on the second viewing, I thought, you know, she was a little too Clara to be a Zygon, but then hmm. I guess that was explained away. Yeah. Um, I, I found it irritating that whenever the Zygon walked, it felt like they were they were walking in shoes, and they they're only barefooted. Barefooted, kind of weird. I didn't see shoes. No, the sound of them walking like they were wearing shoes when they were in fact they're barefooted. Long time oh, well, excuse, well, you know what? You can blame the the sound designer for that. Then you can't blame the writers for that. Yeah, yeah, I'm not right. I'm very really sound effect. Yeah, we, we now we, we're going to have you on nitpick this episode now. No, I'm just saying it just it didn't go very well. Mm. Maybe they have some hard feet. Yeah, uh, I'm thinking. I'm I'm thinking the ending with Kate Stewart is probably a red herring, and that yeah. Kate ended up killing the Zygon. Yeah. Yeah, that that sounds easy right there because she did have, yeah. she did have a, a bait and switch kind of thing. Was it my bait? She looked a bit clumsy pulling her gun out of the holster the first time, like she never used yeah. it. Yeah. Mm. I'm just surprised that the dispatch humans take on the appearance of cat hairballs, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. That's true. It looks, like, it looks like they're sort of, you know, the gas is supposed to, you know, turn a zygon inside out, but whatever happened to the humans, it looks like that they were turned inside out. And considering there's all bins full of them as well. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's it. That, basically, the whole town's been taken out and put into wheelie bins, so that, at least they clean up after themselves. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they yeah, they've got dust busters, some variety. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? 
Dust Bowl. They did. They, they did Zygons as well, though, Guinness. didn't they? Because they, they, we saw him vaporize little girl Zygons. Mm. I mean, that was the the um, you know, the upstart, or whatever. They, the leaders. And, yeah. It, did the Zygons have the ability to shoot electricity in terror of the Zygons? No, I think they were on you, wasn't it? They're supposed to be stingers. They're suckers and stingers, but they yeah, grave it. In the mouth. That's yeah. in the mouth. Yeah. Plus they evolved the ability. Yeah. 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 It seemed to have evolved a lot. Well, well they've been on know. Earth for over 500 years. Hmm. Well, well, it must be said, we're getting our first share of death this season, so you, you can throw that one out the window, you know, so, nice. Yeah, yeah that's it, I, I think, you know, there is, you can draw sort of real world, I suppose. Yeah, the political stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah parallels to it. Um, I wonder whether the idea of, you know, if you wanted to, Things with it, you know, the drone, and you know, how did the Zygon there know that who was going to be piloting the drone? That's going to be the, the husband and the kid, you know, at, at the door. To be honest with you, it, you know, there were probably things like that that were just a little bit too convenient to fit within the the, the idea, the parallel trying to do that. But you know, you have to let that go, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was a bit convenient that the soldier's mom just happens to come out the door, too. I thought that was just like, well, so wait a minute, why is he calling her a mom all of a sudden? They, they can take your uh, memories. They can take people's faces from your memory and transform into them. They oh, okay. That. Well, there you go. Yeah. And also that, that word, hybrid. Comes. I was going to say, oh. Sorry, the, girl, I, yeah. I, I was thinking yeah. it faster than you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Um, that's the, was it the third or fourth time we've heard that this season. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's an ominous thing. It's yeah. uh, going to play out somehow. I bet you the doctor's a hybrid. That's what it's all about. You're a hybrid. Oh, let's uh, bring that one up. He's half human on his mother's side, don't you remember? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Don't open that can of worms again. Yeah, I was trying to avoid mentioning it. <laughs> because that would, you know, in a sense, make the doctor a hybrid. Yeah. And all of a sudden now the doctor's a stalker because he can leave 127 missed calls on Clara's mobile phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn it, she's yeah, you know, self absorbed if she can ignore that many phone calls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, also with here's that hi, it's Dr. Disco. <laughs> oh man. I don't know. But yeah, that's it. A, a Zygon on the plane saying, Hey, you'll never make the end of this trip. Oh damn, really give, yeah. Give give him a give him a bone on that one. Oh right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, well the, the question I thought the second viewing was how is Osgood going to get out of that situation? Because I, I guess from the photos we saw, we kind of know what happens with the doctor. Mm. I mean, um, is Osgood, is the only other Osgood that's alive going to die again? Or <laughs> well, I really hope so. Oh. <clears throat> we really wobbly timey wimey stuff. We had, we, had, we had a discussion last year. And I won't have I won't mention any spoilers, but if you've seen the filming, you kind of know how they got out of it. Yeah. Ah, uh, don't tell me, please. Well, come on. It's, they're not going to kill the doctor off for crying out loud, especially not in an airplane. Of course not, but it's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a hell of a big gravestone for you know, remnants that could fit into a shoebox. Uh, there you go, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But at least she saved money on having letters on the head. Right. Literally, yeah, all she's got is sister, and that's it. Yeah, I, no, but at, at the end of the day, with, with regards to odds, good, I can take her or leave her. I understand why people like her. I understand why folks despise her. Well, you get nothing to worry about. Ingrid Oliver is too busy to be on that show for all time. Relax. I liked her in this one, though. She wasn't irritating to me. She was quite acceptable. Yeah. Now, I'm glad they've left it ambiguous as to which one died. That's a that's a turn that I was like not expecting, and I think it made it a little bit more interesting as opposed to them just saying this one died, mm. this is the one who survived. So at least they're trying to do something outside of the box because I I don't think anyone would have really thought that they wouldn't answer it. Hmm. The nightmare yeah. scenario. What's that? I, yeah. <laughs> this is, was it? Was it the story in the beginning? It said the nightmare. 
Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah. I, I, thought, I thought you were coming up with a point there. All right, sorry. Yep. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I did. I did find it funny that the doctor said, "Have you still got the plane?" Despite yeah. the fact the plane blew up. Oh, I love that. Yeah, I, I love swanning about in a plane a bit. No, no, yeah. about. Then, he, oh, yeah, then, he then he was pointing his fingers in the air. Richard <laughs> Nixon <laughs> going into the plane. That's what you call a presidential salute right there. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's it. You know, they've come a long way in a year. That that much I will say, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a hell of a lot of them. There's a hell of a lot of them. Twenty million. They, they look like very dodgy sex toys. Don't get me wrong. So that means in all those parts, but where the real Clara is is wrapped yeah. up, everybody there's a human. Yeah. 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 I'm yeah. glad somebody, you know, like the you know, at least it was unit scientific advisor goes, wait a minute, you know, um, um they don't do the pod people thing. What, what, what wait? <laughs> well, you know, um she got whacked. So yeah. for uh, for for her being a bumbo and idiot in the first episode, she deserved to get whacked. So take her boobs in that badge, it's quite cool. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're going through this hundred gigabytes advisor like water man honestly how many more do I that, that and more. soldiers yeah a soldier yeah, cannon soldiers. fodder or, or in Star Trek or in Star Trek termed red shirts you know? yeah I, I, I do like how that uh, how that character in um, Magician's Apprentice is work, she's working with Unit yet she says pardon my sci-fi <laughs> yeah, just for that, she should have been white. So, you in this unit? Do you not know about all this shit? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, it, from, for me, it does leave an interesting thing, to be honest with you, because, you know, you've got the start, the Doctor brokered this piece and everything like that, which has ultimately failed, you know. And you you can't necessarily say that the human side of it is at fault to a certain degree, and there's no you know, happy resolution to it. Basically, the the side of the you know the Zygons is pretty untenable. There's either they've all got to go, or they've got to be you know, dispatched in some fashion. So they've got yeah. to be taken off world or got rid of. So yeah, you know, there's there's going to be a very unpleasant ending. <laughs> look out for them to be honest with you because there's no way back on it so perhaps that that's going to be a um an issue for him next week or something like that a, a an unpleasant genocide type decision that he never likes to make hmm. yeah what what <coughs> why he didn't offer just to take him off world straight away take him to a new planet give him a new world that's always the first option for him. Yeah, but you know what? The Zygon initially wanted to take over the world anyway. Initially. Well, I got it. I'll take care of it. Just remember. <laughs> he was yeah. kind of busy with his other two selves at that time. That's, so he left it up. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Yeah. Not back then. I mean, now, when, when he had the Zygon hostage on the plane, he could have said, look, I'll take you away from this. You get all your people together. No, but now, what is there, like 20 million of them or something? Yeah. So it's, it's not that I mean, simple. Uh, if this episode does one thing, it gives you a, a resolution to one of the things that everybody was bitching about that was left hanging at the end of the day, the doctor, oh my God, they left him in the room and nothing happened. You know, <laughs> so. but again, it's, it's a situation also where, okay, I mean, it's like real world events. This yeah. faction of Zygons don't represent the whole of those people. No. So the whole of those people are well integrated in the world and they don't speak for them, even though those people have been given a bad name in our world because of what a few loonies do. So, I mean, that's, that's kind of what it is. I mean, so, so. Yeah. And, and the leaders responsible for yeah, on their side, responsible for marshalling it have been. What? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. They've been, they've been taken off the board permanent. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Although it was funny at first because I thought when he was, at, I, I thought they were going to pull the joke at the playground at the start that he was talking to the wrong batch of twins. And that was, <laughs> a, legit, that was yeah. a that was a legit bunch of seven year olds. He's gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, 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 where did these articles come from? Do they come from the painting from David Doctor? 
Yeah. Yeah, but they also hatched as well. Yeah. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, they so yeah. 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 A lot of yeah. these Zygons were hatched on Earth, and they and basically they immediately gave them a human form. So uh, the majority of them had no idea they were aliens. And this faction wants them to acknowledge their true identity, apparently. At least that's the gist of what I got from it. And yeah, right. I mean, Zygons. That's, that's the mistake, I guess, they made, the Earth people, is that they should have allowed them to integrate as Zygons rather than as human copies, because then there, would, there wouldn't be this issue, because they want to be their real Zygon selves, and I guess they figured humans wouldn't accept that. Which is basically yeah. racist. So I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah that's that, that's a racist. Thing. Well, the, the 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 golden question then ha then has to be asked with regards to next week. Um, well, Auntie Pat, show up and save the world. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> but to answer your question, Graham, about um the 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 doctor told to the little girls, he told they were uh, human twins. Yeah, well, yeah. If you notice, you know, he put on the shades. I think with those shades. He was uh, the, the, what they love, yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah with a strange danger, yeah. You notice mm. every time he meets somebody new, he puts the shades on quick and looks see, and looks at them. There you go. X-ray Whether it's the X-ray or just reads their DNA or something, you know, we don't know. Yeah, I think that's why they split him and Clara up early on because he would have known right away that it wasn't her. I mean, mm -hmm. I would have thought. Uh, just because he's the doctor and he knows these things, I mean, you know what I mean? He would have said, oh, who are you trying to kid, girl? <laughs> but I mean... Yeah. I mean, they, that, that, I, like, <clears throat> I'll, I'll, I'll give him a cue. Even though it was, in retrospect, obvious that at the end she was a Zygon, they, they kept the reveal and they kept the guessing right up until she was revealed in that pod. So I'll, I'll, give, I'll give them a cue in that respect. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I did not see it coming at all. Me neither. Yeah. Uh, me it either. was very, very well played. I, I really, I, I love that little bit of deception there they pulled on us. They, you know, they pulled the wool over our eyes, did a really good job of it. I really enjoyed that. That was really yeah. awesome. Although I was, I mean, before it was revealed she was a Zygon, I was questioning the coincidence that she had to go back and get something from her apartment and then that they just happened to come across the people going into the lift, but then that it was kind of like the big plan. Oh, yeah, man. but you know, but but, but the neighbours, I, I wouldn't want them for parents. They would look psychos, man. You know, I mean, yeah. Like, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. And well, he seems every tower block's got a lift that goes all the way to the big tunnel at the bottom. There you go. Yeah. That's that's handy. Yeah. Hand, yeah. <laughs> the Zygons replaced all the elevators in London and are all around the world with Wonk evaders. Oh. Um, <laughs> I want to know. I want to know. I wanna I, know. Oh God, Sorry, though. I got I got really bad flashbacks to Power of Free and Closing Time with those lifts. Closing Time. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah well, the song. I barely remember that one. I, just, I want to know if we're, if we're going to see the Zygon and the Saris Khan next week. Yeah. They, obviously, the Zygons depend on their lactic milk. So what are they eating on Earth, man? Well, it could be this. They say, I was thinking of that as well, you know, because me being such a nitpicking stickler bastard, you know, to the old series. But at the same time, they did explain that this particular batch of Zygons was born and raised on Earth. So maybe they found a way that they could grow up and adapt to Earth-style food rather than have to need the scarison. Yeah, that's a good point. Don't want the scarison. Because I, I was one of those hardcore, you know, way called the traditionalists who's like, oh my God, they're going to screw up the Zygons again. <laughs> and, but, you know, I, I actually pretty much, I really enjoyed the episode. It's really fun. Yeah. I went into it going, ah, they can't be as worse as they were last time. And they weren't. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, it'd be finished, didn't they? Hey, guys. Sorry. Sorry. Get a little sound off you, Tim. Okay, just the ghost. The ghost okay. Tim Wilder passes. Uh, yeah. Can you repeat that, AJ? Because you got drowned out from that. Sorry, um, I said uh, in big finish when Andy Pat was still on Earth as a Zygon, but in human form, didn't she say she was um, conditioning herself to Earth milk, like cow milk and all that? I'm trying yeah, to remember. Trying to, yeah. yeah, but so but he's the, yeah, but he's uh, but she, she wasn't born on Earth. She came from you know. Yeah. Yeah, but she still was trying. Earth like lactates. Yeah. Oh, well, go and kidnap a cow, you'll be fine. Yeah, but hang on. That's a, <laughs> all right, just a, all right, before we move on, just explain everybody, that's a big finish reference. Okay, go that's ahead. 
Didn't they have a Saraskin in one of those big Finnish stories from the Zygons? Yeah, it was uh, the Zygon who fell to Earth, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Yeah, there was a Scarrison involved in that one that he was keeping in a nearby lake. Yeah. They need to keep like, the same effects. The same the, the same effects on the Scarrison. Just keep them. They're absolutely fine by today's standards. Oh yeah. Oh, so, we, oh go ahead. No, no, I was just gonna say I, I can't really find fault with it to be honest with you. I know like Graham said that you you, know, you have the idea that it sort of slowed a bit, but if you're going to have something that is a world threat level, you're going to have it at three different locations in on the planet. You know, you've broken it up, and I think it was done. Probably Kate Stewart got the arse end of the deal, to be honest. Oh, well, yeah. Hers just didn't seem to completely work together. But you do you have a fantastic Politico sort of, you know, um, half, is, Politico, yeah. half, half, you know, body snatchers, you know, type mix, to be honest with it. So it is really well rounded. Yeah. One thing, oh, go ahead, Tim. Well, I was going to say I agree with you. It, it just—I think maybe it took a while to get to the big picture, but that's the point, isn't it? Because mm. when you get to the end of the episode and you realize that wow, she's been as I gone the whole time, and then, in other words, it all starts to make a lot more sense. Mm. So, I mean, under your initial first watch, you're going to think, oh, we'll move this along, get to the point, you know. But I mean, it's that's not how it is at all, like you said. Okay, go ahead, Ryan. You were next. you want to say something? The one thing I've never really liked about Kate Stewart's character is that every time she's on screen, there's always, like, a line of dialogue that's, like, basically forcing it down your throat that she's the Brigadier's daughter, and they just won't let her, like, be her own character. It's like they're trying to play off of some sort of nostalgia factor, which is, like... What you've been watching. Wait, what line was that? Yeah, well, wait. What the line he mentioned was uh, when the Zygons was... Uh... First to appear with the fourth doctor. No, but that's what I hate. But in this episode, they toned it down. And okay. um, I didn't catch many lines at all. But in, like, previous episodes, I mean, it, most notably in Death in Heaven, there's a lot of it going on there. Well, it says the Brigadier shows up. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. like... I don't think there was any of that this week that I could think of. Yeah, no, no. That's they they don't need to because in, a few, in just a, a few weeks, we're going to see her in... Big finish coming out. So okay, I'm I'm right, right, there, right, Ryan. Right. Oh, I just want to actually hear you there, Ryan. They didn't do it this time. Yeah, I didn't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. There, is, there is one problem with the Kate Stewart thing. When they got the they got the uh, the scientific advisor with the soldiers going out and, go, and with Clara going to Kate on the bay. Why? Why? The, um, why did that Kate Stewart go go off on her own to another country to be uh, on her own without any protection and be caught by a Zygon? It's weird. The Brigadier mm. would never let that happen to himself. He'd always have some sort of backup with him. We, we still don't know if Kate got his backup that never that's hiding somewhere. Well, maybe that was, like, the whole plan because, you know, yeah. um, she went off on her own and then, like, she knew she could probably take at least one Zygon. Okay, yeah, Greg, you wanted to hop in with oh, something? Uh, I was just going to pick Ryan up on his point. I see where you were coming from in death and heaven, but you, you, you've got to remember, man, Technically, even though it seems he's been about a hell of a lot longer, this was only our fourth episode tonight. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so, that's true. Yeah. My only problem with Kate Stewart was, was she wearing freaking heels again? Yeah, oh. she was. <laughs> I was <laughs> I'm yeah. not kidding. If you're, going going into that. No, if you're going into a potential combat situation, why the hell are you wearing heels? <laughs> Mm. It's sad that I, a straight male, have to point this out. Especially the <laughs> shoes they had her wearing that one episode. Oh, my Lord. And, and Graham, if you want to get technical, it's technically her fifth episode. Why? Magician's oh, oh. Apprentice. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that cameo. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> a lot of people forgot about that cameo. So. Yeah. So <laughs> I'll, let, I'll let you pass with that one because, yeah, I, yeah, I almost I'm, forgot. I'm, and as much as I love unit, I do wish they put them in you know, regular army fatigue rather than that black, black ops stuff. It's not, it's not very unit for me. It's well, too, you know, that's the day with the fact they all had to change the name, remember, Philip? Or at least somebody oh, issued that poor broad some damn combat boots for crying out loud. <laughs> <laughs> no, you'd, you know, you'd think after all the things that have happened since she's been in charge of unit, you wouldn't get out of the bed in the morning and go, hmm, let me see, do I want to wear sensible heels or something I could run like hell in? <laughs> at least they're not those 
At least they're not the god awful orange shoes from Death in Heaven. Oh God, man, those things stood out on the screen so bad I was being blinded. <laughs> it's like oh, they didn't they... fly off when she flew out of the plane. I know they must have been really good shoes though, yeah, because they stayed on for how many thousand feet of drop, you know? Oh gosh, why are we talking about this? We're straight. Yeah, well, uh, uh, yeah, I was saying we're going back yeah. to fashion statements. Now? Well, you know, if I'm a PFL, what did you think of the shoes? Now, look. <laughs> I was gonna try them on though to find out. Anyway. Oh god. <laughs> okay, question marks on the brief. Um that, uh, <laughs> that's, that's a good I, joke there. I like that. Yeah, I, I like the joke and I, I I'm consciously aware of the fact that Philip is after a full day briefing. So I, uh, <laughs> I, I thought it was a rather <laughs> cringe I thought it was a rather cringe worthy line, if I can be honest. It just kinda like took me. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Like, he, he should have said boxers. Yeah, exactly. They, they would have bothered that they said boxers. Well, never, never mind for the fact for the control unit, he's there sort of like dipping his hand in some liquid. Oh, and, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, there, there. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't know, I, don't, I don't want to delve too deep yeah. into that, but yeah, just give it a good rub and yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What was it to say? You've got, you've got to detect the what? Oh, yeah, I've, yeah, yeah. I've still, still got that magic. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did, did Keep you that a dog coming. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I gone once. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was glad they did show the a little bit of the old organic Zygon technology. I really loved that. That was a nice little throwback there with the control console and all that and the way they do things, you know, using bio-organic technology. Plus, you know, the sad part is I was sitting there when I, I was watching this episode. It's like I should have known something was wrong when Clara went and flipped open that panel the turn, you know, the the mess with the elevator. Because I'm like, would you have honestly stuck your hand anywhere near an elevator panel that was spitting out some kind of weird looking snot goo? Yeah. No. <laughs> and if you look at it, she does do like a sort of three finger thing to it as well. So it's yeah. like, come on, it there makes sense. Pay good money for that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the elevator! Hey, Val, you've been the quiet, you know? Gimps a mile long, waiting for that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Bill, you've been kind of quiet. What do you got to throw in on this one? I thought this episode was very entertaining. I kind of felt like it was Dark Hentai meets Doctor Who. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All I can say is for you, for you people out there in the viewing audience who do not know what hentai is, Google it. <laughs> yeah, Google it. Yeah, we're not telling you. Oh, God. <laughs> Uh, probably want to delete your internet <laughs> shortly after. Uh, <laughs> now, make sure no one else is in the room with you. No, what I really liked about this episode, and what it really, really you know pulled me in, was just how easy it would be to replace the word Zygon in this episode with uh, Muslim. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Because not all Muslim people in the world are evil. You know, and it's kind of what's happening on this planet right now. It's just yep. factions. And I love the way they kind of touched on that in a roundabout way, because that's exactly what they were doing. Yep. It is. It's going back to the theme of old, making social commentary, just how they run. Yep. And it was very well done. That's what pulled me in. They took something from the real world, brought it into this fictional environment, and put a little twist on it. I love it when shows do that. What I'm pleased about as well, though, is that they, because last year uh, they did back away from it a little, that there was something that happened in a real world situation that meant that they shied away from it and they they sort of yeah, retracted it. it. Yeah, and it was to the detriment, I think, of what they were trying to do. Thankfully, they've just gone balls out with it, and it, it worked superbly. Mm -hmm. And I hope that you will get that sort of continuation next week. All I know is this, several million people tonight sat there when that episode came to an end and went, no next time, trailer! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, I put... I was happy about that. Yeah, when the credits yeah. were rolling, I, I put my TV off. I'm like, no next time, trailer. Hallelujah! Yeah. Well, I think I maybe they've learned a lesson. Um, yeah. But yeah, they've certainly gone for the cliffhanger this, this season as well. Um. Yeah, this one. Yeah, the, the, you're not keep, gonna piss all over it. Yeah, they should keep it like that from now on. No more next time trailers because. Kind of spoilers, probably. Never mind. 
You know, especially when you end on a cliffhanger, I don't think there should be a next time trailer. I really don't because that way you're sitting there going, oh, you know, ricking out what's left of your hair going, oh, something's got what's going to happen, what's going to happen, happen, you know. And that way you have absolutely no hints, nothing to go on. It just makes you walk into the next episode that much more, you know, surprised. No. Okay, <laughs> anything else? Just getting wait for next week. Let's go look forward to it. Yep. yep. Same here. That's all I got. Give us a resolution. Indeed. And I'm loving bad Clara. Just now, was there something weird going on with the Zygon's face? The one who was trapped. It's like yeah. just a little bit weird. Like, was that like <clears throat> touched up with CG or what? Probably. It it Not. looked like the face was like just slightly moving around. Like, not the head area, just the face was just, like, well, it's, it's really a mask with um, makeup underneath. So, I mean, yeah. I thought it worked yeah, okay. The, the, way it was, it, the way it, like, moved, it looked almost like it was touched up with CG. Yeah, but the, you got to um, yeah, the face area. So if they move their yeah. face, the rest of it might not move with it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I'm, all I hope is that Re- Rebecca Front plays a big part next week. And I think perhaps she might do, to be honest with you. Because you've got the very militant Zygons, and on the opposing side of it, you've got her character, who is mm. just like, well, look, look, yeah, just kill them all. That's yeah. what it, uh, oh, she's, she's that one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She, she, she's the opposing side of it, and I, I hope that she's going to play a big part next week, because uh, I think the setup on her character was extremely well done. Yeah. Well, I was, I was surprised yeah. that the doctor was so quiet whenever that business was going on with the soldier and his mom. Because yeah. he just, once again, I, and I don't know if this is a fault in direction or what, but he just kind of stands back there looking like, you know, you would think that he would be like, no, 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 no. Yeah, you know? don't kill her. Don't kill well, her. Don't shoot the her. thing is, for him, it would have been a no-win situation because on one hand, you know, what if it's his mother? What if the story of this thing or person is telling is true? But at the same time, he doesn't want the Zygons to get hurt. He thinks there's still a way to get out of this without there being a major warfare. And I think that's why he was kind of quiet there. You know, what what direction do you really take? If you tell the soldier to, you know, shoot, then, yeah, he's going to shoot that Zygon. But at the same time, at the same time, you know, he does shoot. He could be shooting his own mom. And then, you know, it's kind of a moment that would have tore me up a little bit as to what to do. But at the same time, to be honest with you, the second was I, you know, the person who I was couldn't tell me what their my birthday was, I'd be a little fishy right there. Yeah. Yeah, you should have shot him in the leg. Well, it's kind of weird how he just moves on to the next question. Yeah. Like, I would have repeated that question. I hate to say it, but, you know, they really, really need to call back the old school unit guys because they wouldn't have fell for this. Come on. Oh, no, exactly. Exactly. They've opened up another problem. Where now the basically, Zygon basically Phil just wants flannel back because he's exactly. no, yeah. black no, combat flag. No, 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 no. Not one unit soldier shot anybody in this episode, entire episode. Not one person fired a gun. Well, you, you didn't see it. It was off screen. Then when they, once they went into the house, we didn't see what happened until the doctor came in the back way with the yes. uh, the lady, and we saw that they no. were just lumps of hair. This is the political. Oh, no, I mean it jumped ahead. You didn't see what happened in between. Uh. Okay, go ahead. Bill wanted to say something. Go ahead. This is the politically correct unit. (laughs) (laughs) That's fair enough, but to be be fair, Yates and Benton used to make mistakes all the time as well. They weren't the most perfect of unit Yeah, but you got got action out of those type of unit. You got action. You got guns firing off. You got fights happening. Okay, okay, we're just doing it anymore. But there was another key thing there, and I think they observed it pretty well. This is the 21st century. That was back during the Cold War. You know, when tensions on the planet were high, you know, all the militaries were gung-ho versus now. Yeah. Where- Remember back then, those stories with units, they knew what they were shooting. They were shooting a lot of different aliens, like Daleks or Cybermen like that. Not a human, mm-hmm. something that looked like their parents. <clears throat> Potential human. Oh, yeah. yeah, this is drones. Oh, and, oh, yeah. Fuck. And Vil has Vil, Vil makes a very good point. You know, half half the thing with you know the military job now is you know the war of hearts and minds. To be honest, yep. so there is that aspect to it. And uh, they kind of opened up a little problem because now that Zygons can go into your memory and like pull out a face, surely the Zygons would have 
the answers to the questions, if they can go into people's memories. No, she explained that. The reason why they needed the body print machines, this is the way they explained it all. If they needed knowledge from a subject, such as when they're being interrogated or when they're assuming their thing, they needed them alive in the body print machine to have access to that knowledge. Now, a regular Zygon, apparently without the body print, can take an image out of your mind, but they cannot take your, mem your actual memory information. So they can yep. take images, but they can't take the facts. It'll only be surface memory. Yeah, yeah. Hen hen hence why the mother couldn't answer the question. Now, yeah. okay. But why Clara one... could open the weapons cabinet and use the mm. computers. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now, one thing this, this particular episode did remind me of, you know, especially with the fact that the Zygons now have this ability. How many here have seen a little-known miniseries way back in the old days called The Martian Chronicles? Yeah, I've seen that. I vaguely remember it, yeah. I watched some of it last couple weeks ago. Because the Martians in that particular series, yeah, there were guys in leisure suits on Mars, um were able to have that same ability, where they were pulling surface memories out of people's heads to assume the form of someone they knew. That's what it reminded me of, in a way. Hmm. Okay. okay, so we've wrapped on about it. We've gone on about it. Let's go ahead and let's rate this sucker and put it to bed. Okay, we won't even ask for Eric the Dalek's opinion, but okay. Let's, <laughs> let's, all right, let's start with Kevin. Out of 10, how do you rate the Zygon Invasion? Well, um, going with an eight. All right, AJ. Uh, seven and a half. Ooh, okay, Philip. I'm going to go with a seven and a half as well because they were a bit, a bit slow, but it's a good story overall, and it's only the first part, so seven and a half. Okay, William. Um, for for for, for uh, part one of a two part, I'm going to give it an eight. All right, Ryan. Um, really solid opening to the story. I'm going to give it a nine. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, it that the, the score could really only go up considering what's going to come up next week. Okay. What about you, Beef? Um, obviously, if you take away the series opener, I would say this is probably, if you looked at the rest of the season as a two-part structure, this is probably the strongest opener of a two linked episodes that we've had so okay. far um, right. and I'm, I'm inclined actually probably to agree with one I'm going to go for a nine just because it's going back to what we used to have years ago which would be that Doctor Who is making a really really big social commentary within the program and that was so excellently done I don't think I can, I can give it less than a nine okay what about you Matt and by far, this is one of my favourite openers oh, since Magician's Apprentice oh, of a two-part story. As you just said, so I'm going to give it a 9.5. Oh, all right. What about you, Bill? I'm going to give it an 8. We didn't hear that. An 8. That's a oh, big, eight. big, big, big number from Bill. Yeah, it is. I'm shocked. Okay. What about you, Graham? Uh, to echo these sentiments, the social commentary aspect was phenomenal. Uh, good build up for what's to come. 8.5. All right. What about you, Texas, Tim? Yeah, I, I agree with Graham. I would probably echo what Beef said for the most part. I, I'm not so sure about it being the strongest first part of a two-parter this year, though. But um, um, I'm going to go with a with an 8.5 at this point. I, I'm going to have to give it another watch. But I'm pretty sure it'll only go up from there. And I'm going to agree with the, I'm gonna, with the last few guys. I'm going to give it a nine. And the only reason I'm dropping it down to a nine, I don't know. I, I would have given it a better title, to be honest with you. Because, you know, invasion implies that something's coming in. The Zygons are already here. The Zygons are already starting to move. I'd have called it something like the Zygon Uprising, the Zygon Revolution, something like that that would have been a little bit more fitting. But at the same time, really great episode. And I'm just really glad that they've brought an issue that's happening in the world right now and put it on such a play like this and then took it out like this. Very well done. Brilliant. Okay, so we've rated it. We've talked about it. Let's go ahead and get goodbyes from everybody, and then we're going to zip on out of here. Let's start with Grams. As always, good to be here, guys. See you next week. Texas Tim. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
I'm glad they didn't call it Zygon Insurrection because it would have sounded like a sex toy and a god awful Star Trek movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about you, Matt? All right, bye bye, and see you next week for Zygon Inversion. All right, Bill? Well, Zygons always kind of looked like LSD sex toys, but yeah, I'm looking forward to the next episode. See you then. All right, Ryan. Um, as always, thank you for having me. It's been a blast, and I'm going to leave you all with a little thought here. I think we can all agree that the weakest, the two weakest episodes of the season have been the girl who died and the woman who lived. <gasps> which, uh, which, uh, which, uh, if if I'm, they weren't a two parter. That just goes to show how good two parters are. Okay, save that for the Series 9 roundup, which we'll do at the end of the season. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, next up, William. Uh, thank you for having me here. Hope to be here next week. Happy Halloween, all. Uh, yeah. all right. That's you. Phil. Oh, so sorry. sorry. Um, so, thanks for having me. I'm nearly back, and I'll see you next week for more. Okay, Mary. Well, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. As far as keeping that for, you know, the whole uh, end of the season round, kind of <laughs> added it to the Okay, AJ. I'll see you guys next week. I'm going to be busy playing with my Zygon control board. Ooh. And uh, Kevin. Well, thanks for having me, and uh, see you next week. Oh, yeah. One final note. Yes, Nick Briggs did the voice of the Zygons, in case you missed it in the credits. There you go. <laughs> That's cool. I didn't know that. But he does have a He's amazing. Yeah, because he put this up on Twitter. Uh, Matt Rose caught this. I think I was just left off the credits of Doctor Who just now. In case you'd like to know, I did the Zygon voices. If I'm mistaken, apologies. Those credits move so fast. Anything for an extra 20 quid. Doesn't he, boys? He gets enough money from Philip. Doesn't he, boys? Well, so until next week, please join us when we sit down and have a talk about the Zygon inversion. So everybody take care. Yeah. Good night. Is Ryan doing that one? <laughs> so was Shamrock. Yeah. <laughs>